Okay, Jeremy here, parksbreakers.com, 303-666-9020. This thing an 87 to 95 Jeep Wrangler YJ four cylinder frame. And it is gonna be a B grade, uh, mainly just cause the factory paint is off in the rear. Um, it's got a little bit of scale, but it's mainly just paint flaked off. Um, you can see a little bit build up here, just kind of coming off there. But everything's solid, there's no holes in it, which is the main thing. That's kind of what, uh, we'll, if we even keep them or not. Um, and then this weird plate looking thing, it had a weird bumper on it, so I just had the guys grind it off. Um, but you can either clean it up or, you know, whatnot. So we'll discount for that kind of stuff um, significantly. Uh, so you don't have to mess with, you know, make, make sure if you mess with anything, your time's with it. So this would be an ideal one to sandblast just because you could clean it up nicer. Although it definitely doesn't need it. And I'll tell you why it doesn't need it. I scoped the inside. The inside looks exactly like the outside. There's nothing major buildup. Um, I, if you, there's a couple frames I listed recently that had holes here. This is really common. This is actually not bad. It's scaled up a little bit in here. Uh, just because there's no clean outs on these, but otherwise that's real clean. Uh, track bar mounts are still intact. I had one a few days ago that was torn off. So uh, for those reasons, I mean, it's actually a decent frame. Um, this one here, same thing. I uh, got a little bit of scale in there. You can kind of see flake in there, but um, nothing to where you're actually seeing a loss in like the depth and stuff. So uh, the holes here, which we'll pull these off. They should have pulled them all off, right? There we go. Nice clean circular right so that's a big thing because a lot of times those ru those rust they pinch uh pinch moisture there so um i'll have to get the breaker bar on that one but the rest of them are so oh, i don't suspect that being there the one in the front always kind of wallows out a little bit i'll show you that one up close here in just a second um but just again to show you the back of it and then i'll, sh I'll lift it up and show you the underside of it as well so um it just got a bath that's why it's a little wet looking uh, but and then basically once you get about middle of this frame back is all the where the paints off of it and then uh, ironically the front of it it's still got most of the factory paint on it and what what it did we peeled it a little bit when we wash it you can see the bare metal there that will that will oxidize pretty quickly and brown up uh, but the motor mounts are nice clean straight this was a unwrecked jeep uh, like we'd like to buy um, in part so the front area up through here um, got a little bit with that bushing this is where the uh, radiator core support which is the grill sits and you can kind of see a little pinhole there and another one right there uh, pretty common to happen again and, and I'll tell you why that happens if you don't know uh, it's rubber bushing that sits on top of it there's really nothing that forces it down other than just the weight of it so sand gets up in here and this will happen even in a, a clean like a, a rust free state like we're in um, uh, sand will get up and then that rubber just vibrates it right and it just like literally sands right through it and that's why it's a little you can actually see the little dish kind of there but nothing to be super concerned about in that area um, because again it's not an area that takes any kind of weight or anything but if you're going to be cleaning all that kind of stuff up anyway I would just you know put a little uh, piece of steel or fish plate it in there um, gearbox is nicely mounted I don't these bolts here are probably to the front uh Let's see what was there probably a winch is what they had on this at one time i'm guessing so um but the threads are nice and clean both of them are there nothing broken on that guy that's nice that's where your bumper goes towers look good um will build up around the sides but again nothing major on that guy and that's where your sway bar goes there the other sway bar bracket is on the bottom of the gearbox the steering gearbox bracket that's why you don't see it pull those things but if you need one just let us know and uh, let me get it up in the air here Not a great 
idea the way they did those because it's metal on metal and again a little bit of vibration it gets uh it's that but here's the bottom and that's actually nice paint that's just you can see it it's the dirt on it so a little bit of scale there underneath that track bar no holes uh and again nothing even really nothing thinning out either which is like that where that uh, grill was sitting out there. There's no pinholes in it, no cracks. This area is love to rust out on them. There's nothing like that on this guy. So good, nice, nice usable frame. Again, this is a four cylinder frame. Uh, lately, we've been out of our sixes. They've been hard to get. We um, need a six cylinder frame. This one would be a good viable candidate, especially for the price it's going to be listed at. Uh, and the only thing you got to do is lock the motor mounts on your six cylinder frame. If they're good, if they're not, I can get you a set. Lop these off here, and the sixes are actually easier to do than the four cylinders when you're moving them because the sixes butt right up against the shock towers. They only offset by maybe an inch or so, and they are slightly offset on each side. The fours, you gotta measure them and, and you know, move back. The easiest way to do this, if you've never done one or don't know how to do one of these, uh, if you're not gonna have a shop done, you can do it yourself. The absolute easiest way to do this is to get your belly pan and go ahead and bolt it up in there after you prep your frame. Uh, lop your motor mounts off here. Get your six cylinder motor mounts, bolt them to the bottom of the, uh, the engine. That's a four cylinder, but you'd be, you'd be bolting the normal brackets on there. And then you take these guys on the six cylinder ones and, and just set them, mount them. Lay them out them like they would normally be. Get a hoist or a forklift if you have one. And uh, Normally when I do this, I set them up with the axles and everything, they're all ready to rock. So I'm up in the air already, I don't need jack stands. And I literally just set the whole stem down, and you're going to line up the bolts, which can only go on one way on that belly pan. Sit them right down where they need to be. Sit the frame mounts, they'll, they'll perch onto the axle as they should have been there in factory. And then if from there, it's just a matter of making sure you're not pitched over one way or the other. Um, pretty easy to do, no joke. And then you can literally weld them right into place. Just tack them in place, pull the engine off, and then go to town with your welds on them. Um, not a hard swap to do, especially because, again, they're so hard to get six cylinder flame frames on right now, especially for a price point that we're going to list this guy at. So, 303 666 9020, partsbringers.com. I appreciate all your time, and we are ready to rock. I'm delivering frames, tubs tomorrow to the East Coast. So,